All right, so this tutorial is going to give us a workflow from Revit into SketchUp. And so the first thing we need to do once we're in Revit is we want to make sure that we're in a 3D view um, in order so that we can actually export 3D geometry. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to just now noticing I have my section box on. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Uh, the first thing you want to do, um, since this is a 3D view, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my visibility graphics. And I'm just going to scroll through here so you guys can see. I have turned off a lot of stuff in order for this to be legible in, in SketchUp. Uh, I turned off all the casework, all the furniture, um, a lot, of, any fixtures, masses, anything related to the systems, all the plumbing fixtures, all the specialty equipment. Um, those are some of the highlights that I would rec definitely recommend you guys making sure that you turn off uh, as you go through this. And the reason for that is SketchUp just simply can't handle that uh, much information. And uh, you'll sit there for an hour waiting for it to load in, uh, and then it will end up ultimately crashing. So making sure that you guys clean this up and turn off some of the stuff that you really don't need um, becomes really important. Um, I think I also, yeah, and I also turned off some of the stuff in the, um, the doors as well. So we don't need to see all that without actually physically turning off the doors. All right, and so uh, once we're in there, we can go ahead. Uh, you can eliminate as much as you think is uh, as much as you can. Uh, if you have imported models and stuff like that, I suggest that you um, turn those off as well, uh, so that we really don't need to. We want to cut down and make it as easy on SketchUp as we can. So I'm going to hit OK. Uh, now I'm going to come down, go File, Export. I'm going to export as a DWG. And in our setup. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we're going to export these as solids instead of a poly mesh. Uh, again, uh, a poly mesh is going to really give you a huge kind of a mess uh, when you get into SketchUp. And we really want these things to be um, the components. And we want to maintain those things as components as we get into SketchUp. And you'll see what I mean once I get in there. So I hit OK. I'm going to go Next. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm on my desktop. I'm just going to go ahead and hit for SketchUp. Uh, and you need to do uh, a legacy file. 2004 um, is essentially going to be, I think that's as far forward as I've been able to go and with and being completely successful. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Yeah, I'll go ahead and replace it. And this shouldn't take too long because it's a pretty light model at this point. It's just some basically walls, windows, and doors. Okay, uh, so then we're ready to just go ahead and go into SketchUp. And so then we can come in here and we can just do a file import. And we go find our file on desktop for SketchUp. Hit open. And it's going to sit here and, and think about this for about a minute um, it, based on the size of this model. And this is where things get can get really hairy. If you're sitting here for more than four or five minutes, uh, that probably means you need to revisit your Revit file uh, and make sure that you have cleaned up as much as you can, uh, turned off as much as you can in there. Um, and make, again, making sure that you turn off the furniture, turn off the specialty equipment like refrigerators, microwaves, things like that, turning off the plumbing fixtures and toilets, um, unless you really need those uh, for rendering purposes, um, if you're actually in here trying to do that. Uh, it's going to be something you really want to pay attention to. Okay, and so then uh, that took about another, I think about a 45 seconds in total to get that all in there. That's a really nice amount of time. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hit close. And you can see our building appeared. There's our scale figure. So you know that this is at full scale. Uh, so everything that we modeled in Revit is now... Um, appropriately modeled. Uh, and I've turned off enough stuff in here so that this is nice and lightweight. Uh, it's, we're not going to kill ourselves. Um, but then I can come in here. Oop, I don't want to actually move it. I want to select some stuff. So uh, I'm going to select this, right click, and I'm just going to explode it. And uh, what this will do is this will explode it into its con constituent parts. Uh, I'll just delete that out. And then we can see like we have the ceilings and all this stuff uh, is in here. So I'm just going to zoom in, handle, and you can see how all this is set up. And we have the ceilings in here, we have all these roofs, we have even the rails and all that. Uh, and so what we can do now, is, since we're in SketchUp, if we select one of these elements, uh, it is a component now. And so we double click on that. Uh, that gives us that component, and we can select faces and say all of those wonderful Revit tool, or sorry, Revit SketchUp tools that we have um, in there, we can start to adjust and uh, and we can start to mess with each one of these components as we see fit. 
and double click to deactivate that and you can see that that model's now been edited. Uh, and so again, uh, you want to lighten this up, make it as easy as you can, but uh, this is a really easy way to, to get yourself into um, from Revit into SketchUp. So if you wanted to cut some sections or do some animations uh, really quickly and easily, you can do that. Um, and I know that there are some rubies online that will enable you to apply materials by layer. Uh, so if you guys go in here, uh, you can take advantage of some of these AutoCAD layers and um, that'll be another tutorial perhaps uh, where I'll go through and show you guys how to apply materials to a layer. So I'll just go ahead and undo all this. Uh, but uh, that should take us out and that's it.